Kannada literature Kannada Sahitya is the corpus of written forms of the Kannada language, a member of the Dravidian family spoken mainly in the Indian state of Karnataka and written in the Kannada script. Attestations in literature span something like one and a half millennia. With some specific literary works surviving in rich manuscript traditions, extending from the 9th century to the present. The Kannada language is usually divided into three linguistic phases, Old 450-1200 CE, Middle 1200-1700 CE and Modern 1700 -present. and its literary characteristics are categorized as Jain, Virashaiva and Vaishnava, recognizing the prominence of these three faiths in giving form to, and fostering, classical expression of the language, until the advent of the modern era. Although much of the literature prior to the 18th century was religious, some secular works were also committed to writing, starting with the Kavirajamarga c. 850, and until the middle of the 12th century, literature in Kannada was almost exclusively composed by the Jains, who found eager patrons in the Chalukya, Ganga, Rashtrakuta, Hoysala and the Yadava kings. Although the Kavirajamarga, authored during the reign of King Amogavarsha, is the oldest extant literary work in the language, it has been generally accepted by modern scholars that prose, verse, and grammatical traditions must have existed earlier. The Virashaiva movement of the 12th century created new literature which flourished alongside the Jain works. With the waning of Jain influence during the 14th century Vijayanagara Empire, a new Vaishnava literature grew rapidly in the 15th century. The devotional movement of the itinerant Haridasa saints marked the high point of this era. After the decline of the Vijayanagara Empire in the 16th century, Kannada literature was supported by the various rulers, including the Wodyars of the Kingdom of Mysore and the Nayakas of Kaladi. In the 19th century, some literary forms, such as the prose narrative, the novel, and the short story, were borrowed from English literature. Modern Kannada literature is now widely known and recognized. During the last half century, Kannada language authors have received eight Jnanpith Awards, 60 Sahitya Akademi Awards, and nine Sahitya Akademi Fellowships in India. <laughs> Content and genre In the early period and beginning of the medieval period, between the 9th and 13th centuries, writers were predominantly Jains and Lingayats. Jains were the earliest known cultivators of Kannada literature, which they dominated until the 12th century, although a few works by Lingayats from that period have survived. Jain authors wrote about Tirthankaras and other aspects of religion. The Virashaiva authors wrote about Shiva, his 25 forms, and the expositions of Shaivism. Lingayat poets belonging to the Vachana Sahitya tradition advanced the philosophy of Basava from the 12th century. During the period between the 13th and 15th centuries, there was decline in Jain writings and an increase in the number of works from the Lingayat tradition. There were also contributions from Vaishnava writers. Thereafter, Lingayat and Vaishnava writers dominated Kannada literature. Vaishnava writers focused on the Hindu epics, the Ramayana, the Mahabharata and the Bhagavata, as well as Vedanta and other subjects from the Puranic traditions. The devotional songs of the Haridasa poets, performed to music, were first noted in the 15th century. Writings on secular subjects remained popular throughout this period, an important change during the Bhakti devotion. Period starting in the 12th century was the decline of court literature and the rise in popularity of shorter genres such as the Vachana and Kirthane, forms that were more accessible to the common man. Writings eulogizing kings, commanders and spiritual heroes waned, with a proportional increase in the use of local genres. Kannada literature moved closer to the spoken and sung folk traditions, with musicality being its hallmark, although some poets continued to use the ancient shampoo form of writing as late as the 17th century. The Shampu Sanskritic meter poems in verses of various meters interspersed with paragraphs of prose, also known as Shampu Kavya was the most popular written form from the 9th century onwards, although it started to fall into disuse in the 12th century. Other Sanskritic meters used were the Saptapadi seven-line verse, the Ashtaka eight-line verse and the Shataka hundred-line verse. There were numerous translations and adaptations of Sanskrit writings into Kannada and, to a lesser extent, from Kannada into Sanskrit. The medieval period saw the development of literary meters indigenous to the Kannada language. These included the Tripadi three-line verse, in use from the 7th century, one of the oldest native meters, the Shatpadi six-line verse, first mentioned by Nagavarma I in Chandambudi of c. 
984 and in use from 1165, of which six types exist, the Rigali lyrical narrative compositions, in use from 1160, the Sangatya compositions meant to be sung with a musical instrument, in use from 1232 and the Akara which came to be adopted in some Telugu writings. There were rare interactions with Tamil literature, as well, though religious literature was prominent, literary genres including romance, fiction, erotica, satire, folk songs, fables and parables, musical treatises and musical compositions were popular. The topics of Kannada literature included grammar, philosophy, prosody, rhetoric, chronicles, biography, history, drama and cuisine, as well as dictionaries and encyclopedias. According to critic Joseph T. Shipley, over 50 works on scientific subjects, including medicine, mathematics, and astrology, have been written in the Kannada language. Kannada literature of this period was mainly written on palm leaves. However, more than 30,000 more durable inscriptions on stone known as shilashasana and copper plates known as tamrashasana have survived to inform modern students of the historical development of Kannada literature. The Shravanabelagola inscription of Nandisena 7th century, Kap Arabata inscription c. 700, and the Humacha and Soraba inscriptions c. 800 are good examples of poetry in Tripadi meter, and the Jura Jubalpur inscription of King Krishna III 964 is regarded as an epigraphical landmark of classical Kannada composition, containing poetic diction in Kanda meter, a form consisting of a group of stanzas or chapters, elegiac poetry on hundreds of Viragalu and Astagalu hero stones written by unknown poets in the Kanda and the Vrita commentary meter mourn the death of heroes who sacrificed their lives and the bravery of women who performed sati. According to the scholar T. V. Venkatachala Sastri, the book Karnataka Kavacharitre compiled by Kannada scholar R. Narasimachar lists over 1,000 anonymous pieces of Kannada literature that cover an array of topics under religious and secular categories. Some 50 Vachana poets are known only by the pen names Ankita used in their poems. Most Jain writings included in the list are from the period 1200 to 1450 CE, while Virashaiva and Vaishnava writings are from later periods. Secular topics include mathematics, medicine, science of horses and elephants, architecture, geography, and hydrology. The pace of change towards more modern literary styles gained momentum in the early 19th century. Kannada writers were initially influenced by the modern literature of other languages, especially English. Modern English education and liberal democratic values inspired social changes, intertwined with the desire to retain the best of traditional ways. New genres including short stories, novels, literary criticism, and essays, were embraced as Kannada prose moved toward modernization. Classical period Rashtrakuta <inaudible> <inaudible> court The reign of the imperial Rashtrakutas and their powerful feudatory, the Gangas, marks the beginning of the classical period of writings in the Kannada language under royal patronage, and the end of the age of Sanskrit epics. There was an emphasis on the adoption of Sanskritic models while retaining elements of local literary traditions, a style that prevailed in Kannada literature throughout the classical period. Kavirajamarga, written during this period, is a treatise on the Kannada speaking people, their poetry, and their language. A portion of the writing qualifies as a practical grammar. It describes defective and corrective examples the do's and don'ts, a versification and native composition styles recognized by earlier poets Paratana Kavis. These composition meters are the Badande, the Chitana and the Gadyakatha, compositions written in various interspersed meters. In some contexts, the term Puravcharayar, which may refer to previous grammarians or rhetoricians, have also been mentioned. Some historians attribute Kavirajamarga to the Rashtrakuta king Amogavarsha I, but others believe that the book may have been inspired by the king and co-authored or authored in full by Srivijaya, a Kannada language theorist and court poet. The earliest existing prose piece in Old Kannada is Vidaradhan, Worship of Elders, 9th century by Shivakoshacharya. It contains 19 lengthy stories, some in the form of fables and parables, such as the Sage and the Monkey. 
Inspired by the earlier Sanskrit writing Brihatkatha Kosha, it is about Jain tenets and describes issues of rebirth, karma, the plight of humans on earth, and social issues of the time such as education, trade and commerce, magic, superstition, and the condition of women in society. The works of Jain writers Atakavi Pampa, Sri Pana, and Rana, collectively called the Three Gems of Kannada Literature, heralded the age of classical Kannada in the 10th century. Pampa, who wrote Adipurana in 941, is regarded as one of the greatest Kannada writers. Written in Shampu style, Adipurana narrates the life history of the first Jain Thirtankar, Rishabhadeva. In this spiritual saga, Rishabhadeva's soul moves through a series of births before attaining emancipation in a quest for the liberation of his soul from the cycle of life and death. Pampa's other classic, Vikramarjuna Vijaya or Pampa Bharata, 941, is loosely based on the Hindu epic the Mahabharata. Sri Pana, patronized by King Krishna III, wrote Santapurana 950, a biography of the 16th Jain Tirthankar Shantinatha. He earned the title Yubhaya Kavichakravathi, Supreme Poet in Two Languages, for his command of both Kannada and Sanskrit. Although Sri Pana borrowed significantly from Kalidasa's earlier works, his Santapurana is considered an important Jain Purana. Chalukya <laughs> court From the late 10th century, Kannada literature made considerable progress under the patronage of the new overlords of the Deccan, the western Chalukyas and their feudatories, the Hoysalas, the southern Kalachuris of Kalyanis, the Sunayadavas of Devagiri and Silharas of Karad. The skill of Kannada poets was appreciated in distant lands. King Boja of Malwa in central India presented Nagavarma I, a writer of prosody and romance classics, with horses as a mark of his admiration. Rana was the court poet of the western Chalukya kings Tailapa II and Satishraya. He was also patronized by Adamabhi, a devout Jain woman. Rana's poetic writings reached their zenith with Sahasa Bhima Vijaya, Victory of the Bold Bhima, also called Gada Yuda or Battle of Clubs. 982, which describes the conflict between Bhima and Duryodhana in his version of the Mahabharata epic, one of the earliest poetic elegies in the Kannada language. Unlike Pampa, who glorified Arjuna and Karna in his writing, Rana eulogized his patron King Satishraya and favorably compared him to Bhima, whom he crowned at the end of the Mahabharata war. His other well-known writing is the Ajitha Purana 993, which recounts the life of the second Jain Tirthankar Ajitanatha. Rana was bestowed the title Kavi Chakravathi, Emperor among poets, by his patron king among grammarians Nagavarma II, Katakacharya, poet laureate of the Chalukya king Jagadhikamala II, made significant contributions with his works in grammar, poetry, prosody, and vocabulary. These are standard authorities, and their importance to the study of Kannada language is well acknowledged. Among his other writings, the Kavyavalakana on grammar and rhetoric and the Karnataka Bhashabhushana on grammar are historically significant. However, the discovery of Vardhamana Puranam 1042, which has been ascribed by some scholars to Nagavarma II, has created uncertainty about his actual lifetime since it suggests that he may have lived a century earlier and been patronized by Jayasimha II. Hoysala period In the late 12th century, the Hoysalas, a powerful hill tribe from the Malnad region in modern southern Karnataka, exploited the political uncertainty in the Deccan to gain dominance in the region south of the Krishna River in southern India. A new chronological era was adopted, imperial titles were claimed and Kannada literature flourished with such noted scholars as Jana, Harihara, Rudrabhada, Raghavanka, Kashiraja and others. An important achievement during this period was the establishment of native meters in literature the Rigali, the Tripadi, the Sangatya and the Shatpadi, two renowned philosophers who lived during this time, Ramanujacharya and Madhvacharya, influenced the culture of the region. The conversion of the Hoysala king Vishnuvardhana in the early 12th century from Jainism to Vaishnavism was to later prove a setback to Jain literature. In the decades to follow, Jain writers faced competition from the Virashaivas, to which they responded with rebuttals, and from the 15th century, from the writers of the Vaishnava Kadri. 
These events changed the literary landscape of the Kannada speaking region forever. One of the earliest Virashaiva writers who was not part of the Vachana literary tradition, poet Harihara or Harisvara, came from a family of Karnakas accountants, and worked under the patronage of King Narasimha I. He wrote Garijakalyana in ten sections following the Kalidasa tradition, employing the old Jain Shampu style, with the story leading to the marriage of Shiva and Parvati. In a deviation from the norm, Harihara avoided glorifying saintly mortals. He is credited with more than 100 poems in Rigali meter, called the Nambianana Rigali or Shivaganada Rigali, 1160, praising the saint Nambiana and Virapaksha, a form of Hindu god Shiva. For his poetic talent, he has earned the honorific Utsava Kavi, poet of exuberance. Harihara's nephew, Raghavanka, was the first to introduce the Shatpati meter into Kannada literature in his epic Harishchandra Kavya 1200, considered a classic despite occasionally violating strict rules of Kannada grammar. Drawing on his skill as a dramatist, Raghavanka's story of King Harishchandra vividly describes the clash of personalities between sage Vishvamitra and sage Vashisht and between Harishchandra and Vishvamitra. It is believed that this interpretation of the story of Harish Chandra is unique to Indian literature. The writing is an original and does not follow any established epic traditions. In addition to Hoysala patronage, Raghavanka was honoured by Kakatiya King Prataparudra I. Rudrabada, a smarta Brahmin believer of monistic philosophy, was the earliest well-known Brahminical writer, under the patronage of Chandramoli, a minister of King Veera Balala II. Based on the earlier work of Vishnu Purana, he wrote Jagannatha Vijaya in the Shampu style, relating the life of Lord Krishna leading up to his fight with the demon Banasura. In 1209, the Jain scholar and army commander Jana wrote Yashodhara Charite, a unique set of stories dealing with perversion. In one of the stories, a king intended to perform a ritual sacrifice of two young boys to Mariamma, a local deity. After hearing the boy's tale, the king is moved to release them and renounce the practice of human sacrifice. In honor of this work, Jana received the title Kavichakravarthi, Emperor among poets, from King Veera Balala II. His other classic, Anathanatha Purana, 1230, deals with the life of the 14th Tirthankar Ananthanatha. Topic: <laughs> Vijayanagara period. The 14th century saw major upheavals in geopolitics of southern India with Muslim empires invading from the north. The Vijayanagara Empire stood as a bulwark against these invasions and created an atmosphere conducive to the development of the fine arts. In a golden age of Kannada literature, competition between Vaishnava and Virashaiva writers was fierce and literary disputations between the two sects were common, especially in the court of King Deva Raya II. Acute rivalry led to organized processions", in honor of the classics written by poets of the respective sects. The king himself was no less a writer, the romantic stories Sobagina Son lit. The Drizzle of Beauty, and Amaruka are assigned to him. To this period belonged Kumara Vyasa the pen name of Naranapa, a doyen of medieval epic poets and one of the most influential Vaishnava poets of the time. He was particularly known for his sophisticated use of metaphors and had even earned the title Rupaka Samraja Chakravarti, Emperor of the Land of Metaphors. In 1430, he wrote the Gadagina Bharata, popularly known as Karnata Bharata Kathamanjari or Kumaravyasa Bharata in the Vyasa tradition. The work is a translation of the first ten chapters of the epic Mahabharata and emphasizes the divinity and grace of the Lord Krishna, portraying all characters with the exception of Krishna to suffer from human foibles. An interesting aspect of the work is the sense of humor exhibited by the poet and his hero, Krishna. This work marked a transition of Kannada literature to a more modern genre and heralded a new age combining poetic perfection with religious inspiration. The remaining Parvas chapters of Mahabharata were translated by Timana Kavi 1510 in the court of King Krishnadevaraya. The poet named his work Krishnaraya Bharata after his patron king, Kumara Valmiki 1500 wrote the first complete Brahmanical adaptation of the epic Ramayana, called Tore Ramayana. According to the author, the epic he wrote merely narrated God Shiva's conversation with his consort Parvati. This writing has remained popular for centuries and inspired folk theatre such as the Yakshagana, which has made use of its verses as a script for enacting episodes from the great epic. In Valmiki's version of the epic, King Ravana is depicted as one of the suitors at Sita's Swayamvara lit, a ceremony of 
choice of a husband. His failure to win the bride's hand results in jealousy towards Rama, the eventual bridegroom. As the story progresses, Hanuman, for all his services to Rama, is exalted to the status of the next creator. Towards the end of the story, during the war with Rama, Ravana realizes that his adversary is none other than the god Vishnu and hastens to die at his hands to achieve salvation. Chamarasa, a Virashaiva poet, was a rival of Kumara Vyasa in the court of Devaraya II. His eulogy of the saint Allama Prabhu, titled Prabhuling Alayal 1430, was later translated into Telugu and Tamil at the behest of his patron king. In the story, the saint was considered an incarnation of Hindu god Gunapati while Parvati took the form of a princess of Banavasi. Interaction between Kannada and Telugu literatures, a trend which had begun in the Hoysala period, increased. Translations of classics from Kannada to Telugu and vice versa became popular. Well-known bilingual poets of this period were Bhima Kavi, Piduparti Somanatha and Nilakanthacharya. In fact, so well versed in Kannada were some Telugu poets, including Durjati, that they freely used many Kannada terms in their Telugu writings. It was because of this familiarity with Kannada that the notable writer Srinatha even called his Telugu Kannada. This process of interaction between the two languages continued into the 19th century in the form of translations by bilingual writers. Mystic literature Virashaiva In the late 12th century, the Kalachuris successfully rebelled against their overlords, the western Chalukyas, and annexed the capital Kalyani. During this turbulent period, a new religious faith called Virashaivism or Lingayatism developed as a revolt against the existing social order of Hindu society. Some of the followers of this faith wrote literature called Vachana Sahitya, Vachana literature, or Sharana Sahitya, literature of the devotees, consisting of a unique and native form of poetry in free verse called Vachana. Basavana or Basava, 1134-1196, the Prime Minister of Kalachari King Bayala II, is generally regarded as the inspiration for this movement. Devotees gathered to discuss their mystic experiences at a center for religious discussion called Anubhava Mantapa, Hall of Experience, in Kalyani. Here, they expressed their devotion to God Shiva in simple Vachana poems. These poems were spontaneous utterances of rhythmic, epigrammatical, satirical prose emphasizing the worthlessness of riches, rituals and book learning, displaying a dramatic quality reminiscent of the dialogues of Plato, Basavanna, Allama Prabhu, Devara Dasamaya, Chanabasava, Siddharama and Kandaguli Kasiraja are the best known among numerous poets called Vachanakaras who wrote in this genre. Akka Mahadevi was prominent among the several women poets. In addition to her poetry, she is credited with two short writings, Mantragapiya and Yogingatravidi. Siddharama is credited with writings in Tripadi meter and 1,379 extant poems, though he has claimed authorship of 68,000 poems. The Virashaiva movement experienced a setback with the assassination of King Bayala and eviction of the Sharanas devotees from Kalyani. Further growth of Vachana poetry was curtailed until the 15th century when another wave of writings began under the patronage of the rulers of Vijayanagara. Chieftain Niyaguna Shivayogi originated a new philosophy called Kaivalya, founded on the Advaita monistic philosophy of Adi Shankara, synthesized with an offshoot of the Virashaiva faith. A prolific writer, Shivayogi composed devotional songs collectively known as the Kaivalya Sahitya or Tattva Padagalu, literally, songs of the pathway to emancipation. His songs were reflective, philosophical and concerned with yoga. Shivayogi also wrote a highly respected scientific encyclopedia called the Vivekachindamani. It was translated into Marathi language in 1604 and Sanskrit language in 1652 and again in the 18th century. The encyclopedia includes entries on 1,500 topics and covers a wide range of subjects, including poetics, dance and drama, musicology, and erotics. Other well known poet saints of the Virashaiva tradition include Mupina Sadakshari, a contemporary of Shivayogi, whose collection of songs are called the Subhadasara, Chidananda Avaduta of the 17th century, and Sarpapushana Shivayogi of the 18th century. So vast is this body of literature that much of it still needs to be studied. Vaishnava 
The Vaishnava Bhakti devotional movement involving well-known Haridasas devotee saints of that time made an indelible imprint on Kannada literature starting in the 15th century, inspiring a body of work called Haridasa Sahitya Haridasa literature. Influenced by the Virashaivism of the 12th century, this movement touched the lives of millions with its strong current of devotion. The Haridasas conveyed the message of Vedantic philosopher Madhvacharya to the common man through simple Kannada language in the form of Devaranamas and Kirthanas devotional songs in praise of God. The philosophy of Madhvacharya was spread by eminent disciples including Naraharadirtha, Jayatirtha, Vyasatirtha, Sripadaraya, Vidirajatirtha, Parandara Dasa, and Kanaka Dasa. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, a prominent saint from distant Bengal, visited the region in 1510, further stimulating the devotional movement. Parandara Dasa, a wandering bard, is believed to have composed 475,000 songs in the Kannada and Sanskrit languages, though only about 1,000 songs are known today. Composed in various ragas, and often ending with a salutation to the Hindu deity Vitala, his compositions presented the essence of the Upanishads and the Puranas in simple yet expressive language. He also devised a system by which the common man could learn Carnatic music, and codified the musical composition forms Svaravalis, Alankaras, figure of speech, and Githams. Owing to such contributions, Parandara Dasa earned the honorific Karnataka Sangeeta Patamaha, father of Carnatic music. Kanaka Dasa whose birth name was Thimapa Nayaka, 1509-1609 of Kaganali in modern Haveri district was an ascetic and spiritual seeker who authored important writings such as Mahanatarangini, River of Delight, the story of the Hindu god Krishna in Sangatyameter, N. Rissimastava, a work dealing with glory of god Narasimha, Nalacharita, the story of Nala, noted for its narration, and Hari Bhaktisara, a spontaneous writing on devotion in Shatpati meter. The latter writing, which deals with nidhi morals, bhakti devotion, and vairagya renunciation, has become popular as a standard book of learning for children. Kanaka Dasa authored a unique allegorical poem titled Ramadanya Charitre, Story of Rama's Chosen Grain, which exalts ragi over rice. Apart from these classics, about 240 songs written by the Kanaka Dasa are available today. The Haridasa movement returned to prominence from the 17th through 19th centuries, producing as many as 300 poets in this genre. Well known among them are Vijaya Dasa (1682–1755), Gopala Dasa (1721–1769), Jagannatha Dasa (1728–1809), Mahipathi Dasa (1750), Garama, and others. Over time, the movement's devotional songs inspired a form of religious and didactic performing art of the Vaishnava people called the Harikatha stories of Hari. Similar developments were seen among the followers of the Virashaiva faith who popularized the Shivakatha stories of Shiva. <laughs> Mysore and Kaladi period With the decline of the Vijayanagara Empire, the Kingdom of Mysore Majuru Samraja 1565 and the Kingdom of the Kaladi Nayakas rose to power in the southern and western regions of modern Karnataka respectively. Production of literary texts covering various themes flourished in these courts. The Mysore court was adorned by eminent writers who authored encyclopedias, epics, and religious commentaries, and composers and musicians. The Kaladi court is better known for writings on Virashaiva doctrine. The Mysore kings themselves were accomplished in the fine arts and made important contributions. A unique and native form of poetic literature with dramatic representation called Yakshagana gained popularity in the 18th century. Geetha Gopala, a well known treatise on music, is ascribed to King Chika Devaraja Wodyar, the earliest composer of the dynasty, who went by the honorific Sahitya Vidyanakasha Prastharam. Expert in literature. Inspired by Jayadeva's Gita Govinda in Sanskrit, it was written in Saptapati meter. This is the first writing to propagate the Vaishnava faith in the Kannada language. Also, writing in this period was Sarvina, lit. The All Knowing, a mendicant and drifter Virashaiva poet who left a deep imprint on Kannada speaking region and its people. His didactic vachanas, penned in the Tripadi meter, constitute some of Kannada's most celebrated works. With the exception of some early poems, his works focus on his spiritual quest as a drifter. 
The pithy vachanas contain his observations on the art of living, the purpose of life and the ways of the world. He was not patronized by royalty, nor did he write for fame. His main aim was to instruct people about morality. The writing of Brahmin author Lakshmisa or Lakshmisha, a well-known storyteller and a dramatist, is dated to the mid-16th or late 17th century. The Jaimini Bharata, his version of the epic Mahabharata written in Shatpati meter, is one of the most popular poems of the late medieval period. A collection of stories, the poem includes the tale of the Sita Paradyaga, repudiation of Sita. The author successfully converted a religious story into a very human tale. It remains popular even in modern times. The period also saw advances in dramatic works. Though there is evidence that theatre was known from the 12th century or earlier, modern Kannada theatre is traced to the rise of Yakshagana, a type of field play, which appeared in the 16th century. The golden age of Yakshagana compositions was tied to the rule of King Kantirava Narasaraja Wodyar II. A polyglot, he authored 14 yakshaganas in various languages, although all are written in the Kannada script. He is credited with the earliest yakshaganas that included Sangeeta music, Nataka drama, and Natya dance. Mamadi Krishnaraja Wodyar (1794–1868), the ruler of the princely state of Mysore, was another prolific writer of the era. More than 40 writings are attributed to him, including a poetic romance called Sagandika Paranaya written in two versions, Sangatya and a drama. His reign signaled the shift from classical genres to modern literature which was to be complemented by the influence of colonial period of India. <laughs> <laughs> modern period The development of modern Kannada literature can be traced to the early 19th century when Maharaja Krishnaraja Wodyar III and his court poets moved away from the ancient Shampu form of prose toward prose renderings of Sanskrit epics and plays. Kempu Narayana's Mudramanjusha Seal Casket", 1823, is the first modern novel written in Kannada. Modern Kannada literature was cross-fertilized by the colonial period in India as well, with translations of Kannada works and dictionaries into European languages as well as other Indian languages, and vice versa, and the establishment of European-style newspapers and periodicals in Kannada. In addition, in the 19th century, interaction with European technology, including new printing techniques accelerated the development of modern literature. The first Kannada newspaper called Mangalore Samachara was published by Hermann Magaling in 1843, and the first Kannada periodical, Mysuru Vratanta Bodhini was published by Beshiyam Beshiacharya in Mysore around the same time. Hermann Magaling translated Kannada classics into a series called Bibliotheca Karnataka during 1848–1853, while British officers Benjamin L. Rice and J. H. Fleet edited and published critical editions of literary classics, contemporary folk ballads and inscriptions. Following the rich tradition of dictionaries in Kannada since the 11th century, the first dictionaries expressing meanings of Kannada words in European languages were published in the 19th century, the most prominent of them being Ferdinand Kittel's Kannada English Dictionary in 1894. There was a push towards original works in prose narratives and a standardization of prose during the late 19th century. Translations of works from English, Sanskrit, and other Indian languages like Marathi and Bengali continued and accelerated. Lakshman Gadagkar's Suryakantha and Gulvadi Venkata Rao's Indira Bai signaled the move away from the highly stylized mores and aesthetics of prior Kannada works to modern prose, establishing the modern novel genre and fundamentally influencing the essay, literary criticism and drama genres. <laughs> Navadaya, a period of modern literature At the dawn of the 20th century, B. M. Srikantaya B. M. Shri, regarded as the father of modern Kannada literature, called for a new era of writing original works in modern Kannada while moving away from archaic Kannada forms. This paradigmatic shift spawned an age of prolificacy in Kannada literature and came to be dubbed the Navadaya lit, a new rise period, a period of awakening. B. M. Shri led the way with his English Jithagalu, English songs. A collection of poems translated from English set the tone for more translations using a standardization of a modern written idiom. 
Original and seminal works which drew greatly from native and folk traditions also emerged alongside the translations. Stalwarts like S. G. Narasimachar, Panj Mangesha Rao and Hatyangadi Narayana Rao also contributed with celebrated efforts. Literary subjects now veered from discussing kings and gods to more humanistic and secular pursuits. Kannada writers experimented with several forms of Western literature, the novel and the short story in particular. The novel found an early champion in Shivaram Karanth while another prominent writer, Masti Venkatesh Iyengar Masti, laid the foundation for generations of storytellers to follow with his Kalavu Sana Kathagalu A Few Short Stories, 1920, and Sana Kathagalu Short Stories. 1924, the consolidation of modern drama was pioneered by T. P. Kailasam, with his Talu Gadi, The Hollow and the Solid, 1918. Kailasam followed this with Talai Katok Kulain, Wages for Tying the Mongol Sutra, a critique on the dowry system in marriage. His plays mainly focused on problems affecting middle class Brahmin families, the dowry system, religious persecution, woes in the extended family system, and exploitation of women. Novels of the early 20th century promoted a nationalist consciousness in keeping with the political developments of the time. While Venkatachar and Galaganath translated Bankam Chandra and Harinarayana Apte respectively, Gulvadi Venkata Rao, Kurur Vasudevachar and M. S. Puttana initiated the movement toward realistic novels with their works. Aluru Venkatarao's Karnataka Gatha Vaibhava had a profound influence on the movement for Karnataka's unification. 1925–50 The Golden Harvest While the first quarter of the 20th century was a period of experiment and innovation, the succeeding quarter was one of creative achievement. This period saw the rise of acclaimed lyricists whose works combined native folk songs and the mystic poetry of the medieval vachanas and kirthanas with influences from modern English romantics. D. R. Bendra, with his collection of 27 poems including such masterpieces as Gari. Wing. 1932, Natalea Late 1938, and Sakagitha 1940, was perhaps the most outstanding Kannada lyricist of the period. His poems covered a wide range of themes including patriotism, love of nature, conjugal love, transcendental experiences and sympathy for the poor. Govinda Pai narrated the story of Christ's crucifixion in his work Golgotha 1931. The success of this work encouraged Pai to follow with three panegyrics in 1947. Vishaki, Prabhasa, and Dahali narrated the last days of the Buddha, God Krishna, and Gandhi, respectively. His Hebaralu, Thumb, 1946, dramatizes the story of Drona and Ekalavya, characters from the epic Mahabharata, K.V. Puttapa, Kuvampu, who would subsequently become Kannada's first Jnanpith awardee, demonstrated great talent in writing blank verse with his magnum opus Sri Ramayana Darshanam This work marks the beginning of modern Kannada epic poetry. The work, through the use of metaphors and similes, focuses on the concept that all living creatures will eventually evolve into perfect beings. Other important works of the period are Masti's Navaratri and P. T. Narasimachar's Hanatha. D. V. Gundapa's Mankuthimana Kaga, Dull Thimma's Rigamarol, 1943, harkened back to the wisdom poems of the late medieval poet Sarvina. A celebrated writer of conjugal love poems, K. S. Narasimhaswamy won critical acclaim for Mysore Malage, Mysore Jasmine, 1942. A description of the bliss of everyday marital life, growth in poetic drama was inspired by B. M. Sri's Gadayuda Natakam 1925, an adaptation of Randa's medieval epic. While Kuvampu and B.M. Sri were inspired by Old Kannada, Masti and later P.T. Narasimachar Pu. T. Na explored modern sensibilities in their Yashodhara 1938 and Ahali 1940. The 1930s saw the emergence of Sriranga, who joined forces with Samsa and Kailasam to pen some of the most successful plays in Kannada. Samsa completed his trilogy about Ranadira Kantirava, a Mysore king of yore, with his Vijayanarasimha and Mantrashakti Kailasam's mastery over wit and stage rhetoric come to the fore in his home rule 1930 and Vedyana Vyadi, a doctor's ailment, 1940, while he explores his serious side in Bahishkara 1929, with Sul, prostitute. 1945, he unleashed his contempt for outdated quasi-religious mores. Societal ills were also examined in Bendra's Nagya Hogue, Fumes of Laughter, 
1936, and in Karanth's Garbagudi Sanctum. 1932, which decried the exploitation of society in the name of religion. The novel came of age during this period, with Karanth Chomana Duty, 1933, Masti Subana, 1928, and Kuvampu Subama of Kanor, 1936, leading the charge. Significantly, writers chose to carry on from where Puttana, Gulvadi, and Kurur had left off around the start of the 20th century, rather than continue with popular translations in the style of Venkatachar and Galaganath. Aesthetic concerns replaced the didactic and a sense of form developed. Davudu Narasimha Shastri distinguished himself with his Antaranga and Myura the former was a much acclaimed work which delved into the psychology of the protagonist, while the latter was a historical novel tracing the emergence of the Kadamba dynasty. Another high point of this period is Karanth's Marali Manage the saga of three generations of a family, reflecting the social, cultural and economic developments of over a hundred years. Literary criticism, which had its beginnings in the first quarter century, also made significant progress. B. M. Sri's Kannada Sahitya Charitre Gundapa's Sahitya Shakti Masti's Adhikavi Valmiki Bendra's Sahitya Hagu Vimarshe Literature and Criticism", 1932, and Krishna Shastri's Samskrita Nataka 1937, are particularly notable. The essay, another form adopted from Western literature, was richly served by A. N. Murthy Rao Hagalugunasagalu, 1937, Gorur Ramaswamy Iyengar's Gorur Humorous Halya Chitragalu 1930, and Karanth's Huchu Manasina Hatu Mukagalu Topic. Late Navadaya and the rise of the progressives As the Navadaya period waxed, the Pragatashila progressives movement led by novelist A. N. Krishna Rao Anakru gained momentum in the early 1940s. This left-leaning school contended that literature must be an instrument of social revolution and considered the Navadaya to be the product of aesthetes, too puritanical to be of any social relevance. This movement drew both established and young writers into its fold and, while it produced no poetry or drama of special merit, its contributions to short story and novel forms were appreciable. Pragatashila was credited with broadening readers' horizons. Works produced during this period dealt extensively with subjects of everyday life, rural themes and the common man. The language was less inhibited and made generous use of colloquialism and slang. Anakru himself was a prolific writer of novels but the best works of this school are attributed to T. R. Subha Rao Ta Ra Su, Basavaraju Katamani and Niranjana. T. R. Subha Rao initially wrote short stories, although he later turned his talents to novels, which were popular. His early novels, Purushavatara and Munjavinin de Munjavu, told the stories of the underprivileged, the downtrodden and the outcast. Best known among his novels—some of whose plots are centered on his native Chitradurga, are Masanata Huvu, Flower from a Cemetery, a story about the plight of prostitutes, and historical novel Hamsa Jeet, Swan Song, a story about a dedicated musician of the late 18th century during annexation of Chitradurga by Tipu Sultan, marked as its influence had been. The Pragatashila wave was already in decline by the close of the 1950s. Legendary writers of the previous era continued to produce notable works in the Navadaya style. In poetry, Bendra's Naku Tanti Four Strings, 1964, and Kuvampu's Anikatana 1964, stand out. V. K. Gokak brought out the innate insufficiencies of the more advanced Western cultures in Indila Nail 1965. Navadaya style novels continued to be successful with such noteworthy works as Karanth's Mukaji Akanasuglu Mukaji's Visions. 1968, where Karanth explored the origins of man's faith in the mother goddess and the stages of evolution of civilization. Kuvampu's Maligalali Matamagalu, The Bride of the Hills, 1967, is about loving relationships that exist in every level of society. Masti's two classic novels of this era were Chanabasavanayaka, which described the defeat of Bidiner's chief Chanabasava Nayaka on Karnataka's coast by Haider Ali in the late 18th century, and Chikavarajendra, which describes the fall of the tiny kingdom of Korg to the British East India Company. 
The common theme in both works is the despotism and tyranny of the incumbent native rulers resulting in the intervention of a foreign power appearing on the scene to restore order, but with its own imperialistic intentions. S. L. Barapa, a charismatic young writer, first came to attention in the 1960s with his first novel Dharmasri, although it was his Vamsavriksha family tree", 1966, that put him in the spotlight as one of Kannada's most popular novelists. It is a story of a respected scholar, Srinivasa Sratri, his family and their long-held values. The protagonist's young and widowed daughter-in-law wishes to remarry, putting his family tradition at risk. Barapa's best novel of the period was Grahabanga, Breaking of a Home, 1970, a story of a woman surviving under tragic circumstances. The characters in the story are rustic and often use vulgar language. His other important novel is Parva, a major work in Kannada fiction acclaimed as an admirable attempt at recreating life on the subcontinent during the time of the epic Mahabharata. Topic: <laughs> Navya In the 1950s, even as the Pragatashila merged back into the Navadaya mainstream, a new modernist school of writing called Navya emerged. Though formally inaugurated by V. K. Gokak with his Navya Kavitigalu, modern poems, 1950, it was Gopalakrishna Adiga who best exemplified the ethos of the movement. Poetry and, later, the short story became the most effective vehicles of the movement. With the passing of the Gandhian era and its influences, a new era in which to express modern sensibilities had arrived. The Navya writers questioned the time-honored standards of plot of the Navadaya. Life was seen not as a pursuit of already existing values, but as an introspective search for them, occasionally narrated in stream-of-consciousness technique. Events and details were increasingly treated metaphorically and the short story grew closer to poetry. Gopalakrishna Adiga is considered the father of this form of expression with his Nadeju Banda Dari, The Path Traversed, 1952, where he sought inspiration from T. S. Eliot and W. H. Auden. His other well-known poems include Gondolapura, Pandemonium, 1954, and Buddha, 1959. G. S. Shivarudrapa made his mark in the Navya period with Mumbai Jataka, A Horoscope of Bombay. 1966, which takes a closer look at urbanized society in Mumbai. A protege of Kuvampu, Shivarudrapa's fame came the peak of popularity of romantic poems with his Samagma, Songs of Equanimity, 1951, poems distinguished by an idealistic bent. He continued to write poems in the same vein, although in his later poems there is a gradual shift to social issues with a streak of admiration for God's creation. His critical essay, Anuranana is about the Vachana poets of the 12th century, their tradition, style and influence on later poets. K. S. Narasimhaswamy remained prominent through this era, writing such landmark poems as Salalate, The Sculptured Creeper, 1958, and Gadiaradangadiya Mund, Before the Clock Shop. Chandrashikara Kambar, Chandrashikar Patil, P. Lankesh, and K. S. Nisar Ahmed are among the best known later generation Navya poets. Outstanding playwrights from this period are Gurish Karnad, P. Lankesh, Chandrashikara Kambara, and Chandrashikar Patil. Karnad's Tughlaq portrays violence caused by idealism gone astray. Considered an important creation in Kannada theatre, the play depicts the 14th century Sultan of Delhi, Muhammad Tughlaq in contrasting styles, a tyrannical and whimsical ruler and at the same time, an idealist who sought the best for his subjects. Most plays written by Karnad have either history or mythology as their theme, with a focus on their relevance to modern society. The most acclaimed novel of the era was Samaskara by U. R. Anantha Murthy The novel details the search for new values and identity by the protagonist, a Brahmin, who had sexual intercourse with the untouchable mistress of his heretic adversary. Another notable work is the Swarupa by Pornachandra Tiaswi. Anantha Murthy's Prasni 1963 contains his best collection of short stories including Gatashrada, which describes the tragedy that befell a young pregnant widow, from the point of view of a boy. His collection Moni 1973 includes the stories Navalagulu, Peacocks, and Clip Joint. The Navya movement was not without its critics. The doubt, dilemmas and indecision in every turn of the plot resulted in increasingly sophisticated and complex narrations, which some readers found uninteresting. 
It was derided as an intellectual exercise of the middle class intelligentsia. In its extreme sophistication, it was thought to have lost its touch with realities of life. This led to a gradual waning of the Navia school as it was supplanted by emerging waves of Naviatera, Bandaya protest, and Dalit schools. Topic: <laughs> Postmodern trends. From the early 1970s, a segment of writers including many Navia writers started to write novels and stories that were anti Navia. This genre was called Naviatera and sought to fulfill a more socially responsible role. The best known authors in this form of writing were Pornachandra Tihazwi and Devanor Mahadeva. In his preface to a Bachirina post office, Tihazwi expressed a path breaking observation towards then prevailing literary movements. Tihazwi won the most creative novel of the year", for his Carvalho in 1980 and Chidambara Rahasya in 1985 from the Sahitya Akademi, modernization and westernization continue to inform sensibilities and spawn new literary techniques and genres. The most striking developments in recent times have been the rise of the prose form to a position of predominance—a position earlier held by poetry—and the prodigious growth in dramatic literature. More recently Bandaya rebellion and Dalit literature, in some ways a throwback to the Pragatashila progressivism days, have come to the fore. Mahadeva's Marikandavaru, those who sold themselves, and Mudala Simeli Kol Gail Ityadi, murder in the eastern region, are examples of this trend. Kannada writers have been presented with eight Jnanpith Awards, 60 Sahitya Akademi Awards and nine Sahitya Akademi Fellowships in India, and numerous other national and international awards since India's independence. <laughs> <laughs> Notes <laughs>